So welcome to the next video of the how to build your own desktop PC series. In this video, I'm going to go over a existing pre-assembled desktop PC. This is my old PC. I have had this running for about six years, but I want to demonstrate what it looks like assembled. For those who have never seen an open desktop PC, I'd like to show you what is all in there so you can see what the final product of the newly built PC that I'll put together, what it looks like. And if you have a desktop PC, and you open the case like this, you are likely going to have the same exact components. So in another set of videos, I went through every component and what it does separately. I want to show you what it looks like being put together. So obviously case pretty simple, nothing, nothing extravagant about the case, except for the fact that this is an older ATX case. So the motherboard is down there right here, as you can see, and then everything is connected to it. So power supply right there, a bunch of different cables. Check out the link below for the power supply video where I do go through multiple kinds of power cables that are used to connect to the various components of your PC. So let's zoom in a little bit and see components up close. So here's my power supply. I've always used Corsair power supplies and I've had really good luck and really good performance out of these. This one's been running pretty much nonstop for the past six years. So uh, very reliable. So power supply with a whole bunch of power cables. As you can see right here. A bunch of power cables that are power various devices in the PC. Most importantly, you'll see power connectors right there that powers the, the processor itself, the CPU. And then there is the big long ATX power connector right here that also takes the bulk of the power uh, that powers the various chips on the motherboard. Right here, this big iron piece is the heatsink. And what it does is exactly what the name calls for. It sinks the heat that is generated by the processor or the CPU. It takes the heat away, distributes it over metal sections. If you look up close, you'll see fins. So there's a bunch of metal fins right here. Look really up close, way back here. On the motherboard itself is the processor. And then the heat sink sits on top of that. And there is a layer of thermal putty. It's basically a special kind of paste, kind of like glue that conducts heat. It bonds the heat sink, which is this thing right here, this big metal piece, to the processor itself. So it would conduct the heat away, distribute it over these heat fins, and then a fan right here would continuously run as needed and dissipate or get rid of that heat so it continuously keeps the processor itself cooled. One thing you'll notice is this reddish copper pipe right there. This heat sink has been fantastic. It's got copper pipes that take the heat away from the CPU. And the reason why I picked this heat sink specifically is because it has eight copper pipes, four on every side that conduct the heat away and move it away from the CPU. The reason why I picked copper is copper is the best conductor of heat. And therefore it is very efficient. As you can see right here up close, these copper pipes are bonded to these metal fins and then the heat basically gets distributed all over this. And the reason why there's fins like that, that are separated by space is for two reasons. One, the fan blows air through these metal fins to cool them down. And two, by having fins like that, the surface area of the heat sink is quite a bit. So think about the space of one fin, one side, and then the other. Uh, that creates a lot of surface area to distribute and divide that heat generated by the CPU over the total surface area of these metal fins. So that's pretty much how the heat sink works to get rid of the heat that's generated by the CPU. The next part of the desktop PC are these blades right here. These are memory or RAM. RAM, R-A-M stands for random access memory. So these are memory sticks. And in my case, I have four of them. Each one is eight gigs. So I got 32 gigabytes of RAM. So that's what these sticks are. These are random access memory or RAM sticks. Next thing I want to touch on is the hard disk drives. So the hard disk drives are where you have permanent or persistent storage of your data, your files, your applications, whatever you need to run your PC. So that data stays, persists through power cycles. So if you turn off your power, the data on the hard drive, so here's one hard drive and here's another will stay. So when you bring your computer back up and you power back on, all your files are permanently saved. This is different than the RAM right here. So when you turn off your computer, the data stored in the RAM, random access memory, is temporary. It will not stay in the RAM modules or the RAM sticks 
when you turn off your PC. So that's a big difference. So hard disk drives, that's there. There's really two types of hard disk drives, but actually more than that. But at least in this desktop PC I've used two, I have the traditional hard disk drives that have a mechanical lever that reads uh, magnetic disks inside. Those hard disk drives have been standard technology for years. It is possible for those hard disk drives to fail because there's a mechanical lever that keeps moving so it can read various sections of your hard disk space which are stored on magnetic disks. The newer kind is what's called solid state drives. As you can see right there, this is a solid state disk drive, that Samsung SSD that has very large capacity. So this is a terabyte, so one terabyte worth of space right there. As you can see, it's a lot smaller than this hard disk drive, HDD. And it has this one right here is actually only about 500 gigabytes. So the reason why these are smaller is this is very similar to your USB flash drives. So USB flash drives use this technology. They don't have a mechanical lever that reads magnetic disks. They don't have magnetic disks at all. So the nice thing about solid state drives is that they have a much lower failure rate because there is no mechanical lever. There's nothing moving. There's no moving parts. So the chances of it failing is a lot, lot less than hard disk drive. So something to consider when you're buying parts for your desktop PC, it is definitely much, much better to buy solid state drives instead of hard disk drives. The reason why I have both is because I have some hard disk drives that I've had for seven, eight years. I've had them for a while. The bulk of the stories I put on the solid state drive. So quick overview of HDDs versus SSDs, something to consider when you're buying parts for your PC. In my case, I've got one, two, three of the traditional hard disk drives on one solid state drive. Last but not least, this big component right here, that's my graphics processing unit, that's my GPU. And that's the component that drives your graphics, it also drives your display monitors, it does a lot of graphics processing. So if I'm playing any games or doing anything that requires graphics intensive processing, that's what this module does. Here's what it looks like. Right here, as you can see, a lot of ports right here for connecting different monitors. Uh, you are definitely going to have some form of GPU uh, on every PC, even if it is a laptop. On laptops, it's a lot simpler because it's usually the monitor is right there, part of the laptop, and it might have an external port of some sort. For desktop PCs like this, this thing has a lot more processing power. Uh, and as you can see, it's got its own heatsink. So this right here is a heatsink for the processor, the graphics processing unit itself, very similar to the heatsink that's for the CPU. So effectively, you've got two processing units, one that's a central processing unit, the CPU, and one that's a graphics processing unit, GPU. Slightly different, that technology is geared more towards the graphics processing rather than the general purpose processing, which is what your CPU provides. So as with all ATX motherboards, your external connectors are gonna be on this side right here. So going around, here's what it looks like. I've got all my connectors. So here's my display. The motherboard itself supports an external set of displays. There is also all my USB, my audio, etc. And down here is my GPU external connectors, which is only display monitor connectors. So I got DVI, HDMI, and display ports. These are two different types of connectors for connecting the monitors. So that's pretty much it for an overview of a assembled desktop PC. The intent of this video is to show you what the inside of the finished product looks like. So when you're putting things together or when you're thinking about the parts and components, you know what the end result is gonna look like and you can keep that in the back of your mind as you are selecting different parts. Be sure to check out the other videos in this video series. I'm sure there'll be some other information that you might find helpful as you do your own project. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.